Attempted murder of student on Settles Igabi community in Kaduna as parents demand justice. Troops eliminate 11 SWAP terrorists in Sambisa Forest. National grid collapses for fourth time in 2024. On the foreign scene, Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso turn their backs on ECOWAS coup leader SAFE. Hello and welcome to Trust TV's news update. I am Chiamaka Umafo. Thanks for joining us. The father of a 400 level computer science student at Al Kalam University, Katsina, Abdurrahman Adamusani, who was stabbed, a youth in Rigachiku community of the Gabi local government area, Kaduna State, is seeking justice. Stor alleged that his son was stabbed about three times with a knife by youth in the community. According to him, the incident occurred around 9.30 p.m. on June 26, 2024, as his son was heading home along Damori Street within the community. Trust if his Bello Musa visited the family residence of the victim at Rigachunku community in Igabi local government area of Kaduna State and files in this report. This family is still devastated by the unfortunate incident that led to the attack on their son, Abdurrahman Adamusani Stars, by a youth in the community. Let the man be punished. Let him know that it is wrong. What is wrong in the boy overtaking him? What the boy's crime? What crime was he? There was destruction to kill him. Because the more he had him, the, the, the man who had him said, he, we will kill you. How, why? Just overtaking? This, this is uh, what you call road rage. So you did something very small and somebody is annoyed to the extent that he would, he is carrying a knife with him. You take a knife, you follow somebody, you chuck him and rip his stomach. You intend to kill him. According to the family, Abdurrahman was rushed to the hospital in a cold blood. Trying to see uh, what, what's happening. Uh, they have, by that time, they have already tore his stomach. His, his intestines, intestines, as I was told, were dangling. The boy is already on the ground. Uh, three times they tore, they puncture and tore, and they even choked him on the, on the hands, on, on the thigh, with a knife. Then they, when they realized probably they had finished with him, they entered their car. By that time, people have started gathering. They drove back. They reversed at high speed to, uh, to the uh, junction of the road and drove up. I have never experienced this kind of horrific incident before. When we took Abdurrahman to the hospital, his intestines were out and I thought he would not survive it, but he did. Because as the one who was holding him, I realized he was only crying for help. This is the exact location where Abdurrahman was stabbed, and this is the car he was driving when the incident happened. The family said the suspect is still at large despite reporting the incident to the Rigachikun Divisional Police Station. In the evening, we went to the Rigachikun Police Station and lodged a formal complaint that this called uh, Dati Serki, junior brother to this man, has, has done this, 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 this. They made us uh, sign, uh, write a statement and sign and everything and they said they will... Uh, they will uh, go and arrest him or, what, or whatever it is. They will do their work. That is uh, on, on, on Thursday evening. Up to now, we didn't hear anything from them. Abdurrahman is currently at the hospital receiving treatment. Ina sa ahukun tawande aikata wanna al-amar. Ina sa ahukun tawande aikata wanna al-amar. I want the authorities concerned to take decisive action. We were told that that boy has been terrorizing people. We want Abdurrahman's case to be the last. 
justice for Abdurrahman, just like the youth put the, the youth put it on, on internet, on Instagram, um, on everywhere. Justice for Abdurrahman. Let this man be brought to court, arrested, tried, and if found guilty, convicted. Because if you don't punish people, they believe they are above the law. We don't, we don't want it buried under the carpet. No. The State Police Command Public Relations Officer ASP Masur Hassan could not be reached to comment on the matter. Bella Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. Hopefully, Abdurrahman and his family get the justice they deserve. Now, to more security stories, troops of the Nigerian Army deployed for special clearance operations in Sambisa Forest have eliminated 11 Islamic states of West Africa province ISWAP terrorists. The Nigerian Army, in a statement on its official X handle on Saturday, said the defeat was achieved following a coordinated special clearance operation with a hybrid force from terrorist enclave in Jongo village within the notorious Sambisa forest. It said the troops targeted the enclave and engaged the terrorists in a fierce gun battle, killing some while others fled. The army said its troops further conducted exploitation ahead of the enclave, leading to the capture of some arms. According to the Post, arms recovered from the terrorists include 99 rounds of 7.62 by 54 mm, on metal link, 19 rounds of 7.62 by 39 mm, three AK-47 rifle magazines, two 36 hand grenades, and two locally made guns. The pan yoruba Social, Cultural and Social Political Organization, Afeni Vera, on Friday expressed concern over the resurgence of kidnapping, banditry, attacks on security officers, and continuous herders' farmers' clashes in the country. In a statement by spokesman Jari Ajayi, Afeni Vera urged the federal government to deploy modern technology to combat the incessant menace. The group said the recent kidnappings, attacks, and farmer herder crisis have become a worrisome trend that needs urgent attention from government. I find it very well calling for a serious review of the country's security architecture, maintaining that the plan by the government to engage communities and block avenues through which terrorists and kidnappers recruit more members should be put into action immediately. The group urged the government to consider the immediate constitution of state and local government police engagement with local communities and deployment of modern technologies to combat crimes and forestall terrorism. Over in Ondo State, suspected herdsmen have attacked operatives of the Ondo State Security Network Agency, otherwise known as Amoteku Corps, in the Igoba community in our current local government area of the state. The herdsmen launched the attack on the Amoteku operatives while the Later, we're enforcing the anti-open grazing law operational in the state. The spokesperson for the Amotoku Corps in the state, Jimo Adenike, confirmed the attack in a statement on Saturday. He said the officers were acting on complaints from farmers in the Igoba and OC communities over constant destruction of their farms by cows. It was guarded that one of the officers, yet to be identified, was hawked by the armed herdsmen during the attack. And then Ike disclosed that the herdsmen were armed with stones, bottles, and cutlasses, which they used to attack the officers. According to Adinike, the officers had to quickly retreat to base on the order from the command as the attackers continued throwing stones and bottles till the Amoteku operatives escaped to the main road. Still staying with the Fulani herdsmen situation, some Fulani herdsmen have said that their cattle routes are now being occupied by farmers. The said the block has made them to resort to rearing of their animals close to highways across many states in the country. They said that this after the recent election of new executives of Mieti Ala Cattle Breed Association of Nigeria across the Federation. And Imam tells us more. Many Fulani herders in Nigeria believe that most of their problems is lack of unity and division among themselves. They call on the leaders to liaise with federal government to ameliorate the plight of hiders across the country. We no longer have enough space to rear our animals, especially our cattle, because the route has been overtaken by farmers, and sadly, we have no say. 
We want the new leadership to address our challenges because we only follow their lead. So they should do the needful. We have numerous problems, honestly, but the most pressing one is a cattle route to move around. The truth is that some farmers are selfish because they will not even engage in farming and at the same time not allow us to rear our animals. In as much as we are into farming, we are however urging the leaders to our most important needs, which is the cattle road, so that we will leave the major roads. The National President of Mieti Allah Cattle Breeders Association of Nigeria, Mark Ban, promised to use his position to address their concerns. He said the leadership is pushing for the creation of Ministry of Livestock and Animal Husbandry. Uh, we have a small problem here in Boshi, but uh, by his grace, with this election now, this one will be over. I uh, will do all we could to make sure that there is one single um, leadership in all the states of uh, the federation. Mm -hmm. So what is happening here? It's, it's a little issue that is going to be brought by his place. He called on Hades to live in peace and harmony with fellow Nigerians. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. The political matters, the People's Democratic Party, says it will appeal the court verdict in validating the party's primary election in a dual state. On Thursday, Justice Iyang Ekwo of the Federal High Court in Abuja voided the February 22nd primary that produced Aswe Igudalu as its candidate. According to the courts, the exercise was voided on the ground that 378 delegates who were supposed to vote at the primary election were unlawfully excluded by the PDP. But the party, through its National Campaign Council for the Edo State Election, described the court verdict as a little setback. Chairman of the Council and Adama State Governor, Amadou Fintiri, reacted to the court verdict on Saturday at an inaugural meeting with the PDP National Executive Committee, which was held in Abuja. He urged council members to be steadfast, expressing confidence that the PDP is in the race to win, following what he described as the sterling performance of the outgoing Edo State Governor, Godwin Obaseki. Nigeria's power grid has collapsed again with the country currently generating 0 0.80 megawatt of electricity. A check on the website of Independent System Operator and Autonomous Arm of the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, indicated that power plant contribution to the grid began to decline around 2 p.m. to 2,797.16 megawatts from the average 3,417.99 megawatts around 1 p.m. The electricity contribution further declined to 1,020.08 megawatts around 3 p.m. before dramatically falling to 0 0.80 megawatts by 4 p.m. Reports say the 0 0.80 was generated by the Trans Amadi power plant. Confirming the collapse, the Enugu Electricity Distribution Company, PLC EEDC, said the incident occurred around 3.09 p.m. A public announcement signed by its head of corporate affairs, Emeka Eze, noted that the situation led to loss of power supply. This will be the fourth power grid collapse in 2024. To more news, skin business is an age-long industrial practice that made Nigeria a force to reckon with in terms of leather production. But the current foreign exchange crisis, coupled with the economic turbulence and persistent farmers' had its conflicts, have continued to threaten local tanneries in northern Nigeria. Trust TV correspondent Idris Jabrin reports that despite Nigeria's thriving export market, tanneries in Kano State are still trying to remain in business owing to inadequate raw materials arising from mainly banditry in the Nigeria's northwest region. His report. The city of Kano in northern Nigeria is the largest commercial hub for the leather industry. The tanneries in Kano are bustling with activities, especially during this time of the year as men and women work on heights and various skins. These tanneries are the biggest suppliers of local leather, generating hundreds of jobs for youth across northern Nigeria. Nigeria tanner skin top 10, the ticket is 14 part of our dunya. The hide and skin business is one of the most lucrative business in Nigeria. We have millions of people who are into this trade. And over the years, you can see how people are trooping to do this business. Even though we have 
so many challenges but thank god the trade is still going on but i believe that with time we will surmount those challenges that we have Kano tanneries like other leather processing centers are the beginning point in leather producing value chain the tanneries receive hides and skins that have been stripped from slain animals and take them through the tanning process until they become leather aside from the usual cow and goat skin some tanneries also specialize in a range of exotic skins like snake and crocodile 90% of tanning activities in Nigeria is done in Kano and what you can see here is just a testimony of uh, what I've just said that if you look at all these trucks, trucks here behind you, trucks there, truck here, they are coming from various states of Nigeria to Kano. Leather produced at these centers goes on to become footwears, bags, and clothing, and are transported from Kano to various points all over the world. Some of the world's biggest fashion brands are known to source their leather from Kano tanneries. Unfortunately, these thriving age-long traditional trade is now threatened by a number of challenges. In Nigeria, we have 18 million heads of cows and we have about 70 million of uh, uh, goats and we have about 47 million of sheep which involve the sheep and the ram, all in that group. And this figure has been going down in the sense because the breeding is not encouraged. The threat of insecurity in the northwest region from where 90% of these animal skins are sourced have over the years continued to pose a challenge to local tanneries. According to tanners, by this time each year, they must have gathered 60% of their annual raw materials. But this year the story is different. <laughs> Uh, like you know, Nigeria we are in a serious economic situation, economic problem. And uh, for us who are dealing with tanneries, most of our raw materials, we used to get it from villages and towns across northern Nigeria, particularly in the northwest. And you know about the issue of banditry and kidnappings that, is, that, that, that are happening in this axis. This is seriously affecting our businesses. Apart from the threat of insecurity, unfavorable government policies, the inadequate capital, and the current high cost of living among Nigerians seems to have made it almost impossible for most tanneries, with the exception of Kano, Tan, and a few others, to continue to remain in business. Hoping that one day things will be better and tanning will return to its proper place. Idris Jubrin, Trust TV News, Kanu. Nigeria's vibrant fashion seems a testament to its rich cultural heritage and dynamic creativity. From bold colors and intricate patterns that celebrate tradition to innovative designs that resonate globally, Nigerian fashion is not just a trendsetter but a cultural ambassador on the international stage. Embracing both heritage and modernity, Nigerian designers redefine African style while influencing global fashion trends with a distinctive flair and creativity. Suwaya Abubakar has more in this report. Nigerian fashion is currently undergoing a dynamic transformation, marking a significant departure from previous years when it appeared that the country's diverse cultural expression were overshadowed by Western influences. Many of the fabrics used in Nigeria fashion today are not indigenous to the country, but are imported, reflecting the challenges faced by the dwindling local textile industry. Despite the reliance of imported fabrics, this trend underscores the adaptability and resourcefulness of Nigerian fashion designers and enthusiasts alike. From what I've seen, I'm really, really impressed with how far we've gone in the fashion industry because you see most of these big weddings before growing up we get to see that most of these designs are imported but right now you have big fashion houses creating masterpieces for nigerians and also people in the diaspora fashion in nigeria has always been a vibrant expression of culture characterized by bold colors intricate patterns and unique silhouette that narrates stories of heritage and individuality 
This passionate creativity fuels a thriving fashion industry that not only resonates locally but also influences the global fashion scene. Nigerian fashion have really progressed. If you look at it the last 10 years ago, you cannot compare what we are able to do then and what we are achieving right now. The way we combine things together gives, gives us a different edge from other places. Before, Nigerians used to travel all the way to Senegal to get things, but now we are competing with them, so we are improving. The Nigerian industry has grown really well. Like right now you get to see people creating designs for Nigerians and also people in the diaspora. As a matter of fact, people in the diaspora are coming to Nigeria to create designs. Yeah, Nigerian fashion has evolved in a lot of ways because I have seen Nigeria move from almost nothing to almost everything in Nigeria. We started from when the whole world doesn't even recognize us when it comes to fashion, but now I am proud to say that Nigeria has gone globally. Nigerian fashion is a celebration of heritage and these designs are reshaping African style with a global perspective, pushing boundaries and setting new trends. As Nigerian fashion continues to evolve, Nigerians are not only setting trends but also influencing global fashion, showcasing the unique essence of Nigerian style. I feel like Nigerian designers, we've, we've carried the whole idea of fashion on our shoulders and if you go on social media you get to see that almost pe people from different parts of Africa are dressing the Nigerian fashion because of how much we've imposed ourselves or how much we've uh, you know um, expressed ourselves in the fashion industry. When you look at Nigerian fashion the way they combine their things like we do a lot of stonework if you look at Senegalese stonework, you see that Nigerian stones come out more better, more creative way. If you see um, um, clothing that are from Nigeria, they are quite different from what you see from Senegal. Things that come from Senegal are uniform things. But when you see things from Nigeria, you really, you cannot uh, just but admire them and love them. As Nigerian fashion continues to evolve, Nigerians are not only setting trends but also influencing global fashion, showcasing the unique essence of Nigerian style. Looking at the fashion industry now in Nigeria, I think Nigerian fashion industry is one of the leading fashion industry in the whole of Africa because um, looking at the way we incorporate the Western culture and also our culture, you find that, that there's a lot of creativity and even the Western culture are beginning to copy us. From the intricate details of traditional attire to the bold statement of modern designs, Nigerian fashion has come a long way. It is a force to be reckoned with on the world stage captivating audiences with a unique flair and undeniable cultural expression. Sumaya Abubakar, Trust TV News, Abuja. What lovely designs we have there. Away with foreign scene, the military leader of Niger Republic, General Abdurrahman Tiani, on Saturday said his country, along with neighbors Mali and Burkina Faso, have irrevocably turned their backs on the West African region bloc, ECOWAS. He disclosed this at the opening of a summit in Niamey between the three Sahelian nations who pulled out of the larger group earlier this year. The president of the ECOWAS Commission, Omar Elio Tori, had on Thursday lamented that despite several efforts being made by the regional bloc to bring Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger back to the fold, their trail are not showing any sign of returning. While speaking at the opening ceremony of the 92nd honorary session of the Council of Ministers of the Bloc in Abuja, he said ECOWAS was yet to establish a framework for negotiation with the authorities in the three Sahelian countries on the decision to withdraw their membership from the community. On January 28, the three military junters in Burkina Faso, Mali and Niger announced they would leave the ECOWAS. In a sport, Steve Lewis, Nigeria's senior men's national rugby team coach, the Black Starlings, has emphasized the need for regular competitions to enhance the team's performance in the Africa Rugby Sevens Nations Cup. This is contained in a statement on Saturday by the Nigerian Rugby Federation. It stated that Lewis also highlighted the challenges faced by the team regarding the integration of eight new cups and the diverse origins of the players. 
That's it for news updates at this hour on Trust TV. For more of our news programs and documentaries, please do want to follow us on our social media platform and on our YouTube live stream. I am Chiamaka Mwafo. Thank you for watching.